Hello everyone, my name is Albert and welcome back to our 1 d Studios video and in this video we are once again repainting because this is the second part, hooray, you, you made it till here. So I'm not, I don't know yet how I'm gonna call this video but this is part 2 of my how to weight paint in GMX editor or how to weight paint in MD. Anyway, so uh, today we're going to start off by introducing you to the modes of painting, the most used modes of painting. So, the first one is the one that you firstly used when you, uh, when you were weight painting, and is the circle select. So, what is this one? Well, it's simply whatever is in the circle that your that is followed by your cursor gets wave painted. Of course, this is the most basic and well it does what it says. It fills the weight with a certain amount. So again, this is something very basic. So yeah, first, first mode, the one that just fills the circle with the weight you mentioned here. Second one is the gradient. So for those of you who are familiar with the gradient, well, who are not familiar, familiar with the gradient, well, a gradient is literally a smooth transition from a value to another value, which is, of course, different because if it were different, it would not be a gradient. Anyway, so, uh, how gradients work in MD? Well, with your left click, you can draw a line right here. I don't know how well you can see it, but this is a line. And you have two values that are start and end. Start is the first one, which in my case is zero, and end is the second one. In this case, 100. So, this sometimes works, this sometimes doesn't work well, because it's a bit buggy. And, well, you can start drawing from a direction to another direction. For example, you have those little arrowheads to, inverse, uh, to invert everything, or to invert the values right here. So, how you apply a uh, weight paint gradient? Well, you just with your left click, draw a line. This is going to be the start point, and this is going to be the end point, the point on which you just let go of the mouse, and well, ta da! There's stuff painted. So, of course, this will vary a lot depending on what values you have. Those, of course, apply like with the circle or normal or default volume however you want to call it let's call it right now just the circle mode of paint and well of course those are the values and if you haven't noticed already those values right here are color coded for example 100 is fully bright red 75 it's a bit darker 50 it's much darker and so on and so forth. So the next one, and this is something that I wanted to leave for the third video, which by the way, if you're watching this further down the line, make sure you watch it because those of you who are waiting for this are just simply going to kill me for doing this deal because I'm gonna leave I'm going to release the third part in a week. Because I don't have that much time. And I'm a bit lazy. Anyway, so if it's already released, make sure you watch the third part, which is gonna be tips and tricks. So this is the thing I wanted to leave in the tips and tricks video, but I said it's too important, so I have to say it in the second part, or maybe I should have said this in the first part. But this is the mode button. So what does this do? Well, as soon as you click it, you see you your whole model changes. So right now in this kind of view or this kind of mode, 
you see exactly how weight it's distributed on your mesh. So for example, if I were to select this bone, you see that it has influence, again, the colors of the weight values matter a lot here. 100 is full influence, or 100 is red and red is full influence. Zero, it's, well, nothing, it's blue. So again, make sure you understand those. So in this case, or in this mode, weight type, D, you see exactly how how much the, the selected bone affects the part of your mesh. For example, if we go into, into transfer view right now, well, you can also change it into the weight type. So, if you select your bone, you see that only the, that specific part moves with the model so you you see that the values are very important for example if i were to go back right here on the edges it's all weighted with 50 so it's weighted with 50 right here the r is 100 and well if this will help you a lot when it comes to weight painting a lot of models and also this is the way to go just for weight painting in general because you understand better instead of just looking at some points on your model and well yeah doing that trust me trust me before i found out about this weight painting was such a big pain it's still a pain now but it's much it's much better with this mode of viewing Okay, so for the next part, I kind of need to change up a bit the scenario because I, I want to give you a real world example. So let me do that real quick. So right here is Claire, one of my models. And this has to do, for those of you who have made a model or are just making a model, the masking tab or the F3 button. You can also, you, you can also trigger it on and off by pressing the little M right here. So, for those of you who made a model, you know that you can turn off certain parts of your, of your model. For example, if you want to just white paint on the hoodie, and only on the hoodie, well, you can just paint the hoodie. So yeah, what does this help with? Well, it's it helps that you won't hit our parts by mistake and you will get straight vertices. Straight vertices are, well, for example, you just waited something and then you get to move that bone and well, you see part of the hand coming with the hoodie. And that's, of course, not good. So, uh, this also helps with the mesh, but also, for those of you who did not know, it also helps with the bones. Of course, you can turn them on and off. And here's a, here's a little trick. In order to find out which bone you have selected and which is which on the list, make sure in the editor tab, you are on the bone section. And on clicking a bone also make sure this is enabled well the editor automatically selects the certain bone the specific bone for you that you selected in the view for example let's say we get to weight paint the hoodie well we click that bone and you can also select an editor so we know which bones to turn off and on of course the editor also helps you if or the editor still does this if you select multiple bones. For example, I select all those bones. Well, they're all selected right here. Okay, so right now we are on to the last subject of this video, which is deformation types. And let me tell you, this is something that I cannot understand very well, but I'm going to try my best to explain it. But for now, I'm just going to have to do a little bit of work 
as I have a little bit of adjusting to do because Claire, as some of you who might know, is not yet 100% working. Well, she is working, but it's a bit iffy. So, deformation types. What are those? Well, pretty simply, there are three main deformation types. BDEF, SDEF, and QDEF. Right out of the bat, I can tell you that if you use QDEF, well, your model is gonna crash, or is gonna crash on D. Uh, from what I understand, QDEF is not yet implemented in MD, and I don't think it Will ever be as MD is a very old program and well it hasn't really changed till since 2012 2010 I think 28 anyway MD is really old and I don't think QDEF will ever be implemented I don't know who made PMX but hey maybe it's also used in some of our programs so who know anyway so QDEF is bad <laughs> don't use it it will crash MD. So now on to the two most popular and also most used. The most used is BDEF because BDEF, to put it simply, is basic deformation. That's what I think the will B from BDEF comes from. So BDEF or basic deformation. As you know before from before. Weight painting is just assigning certain influence to certain vertices and, well, making vertices move with a bone. Now, to put it even more simply, it's just selecting a bone and telling the vertices to move after that bone with a certain strength, or just letting the bone give it the strength to move the vertices at a certain level definitions right anyway so what is BDEF BDEF it's the most basic it just takes the bone and weight paints on it so this is BDEF it just takes it and paints it now the other one, which I still don't get really, 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 really well. But I know it helps in some situations. So, SDEF or spherical deformation. What is that? Well, you see, BDEF is just moves the vertices, while SDEF moves the vertices on a sphere. So, it's Let's say that if we were to select those vertices right here, so if we were to select this, those vertices right here, and right now don't be scared, but I'm gonna go into a little bit of a dual screen mode. Please move to the dark side. Thank you, and. Use this bone to move everything. There we go, like that. So, usually bones don't move like this, but hey, just for the purposes of demonstrating how SDEF works or spherical deformation works, I'm gonna do it like this. So, as dev, like I said, it moves the vertices on a sphere. So if I were to just select those vertices right here and convert them to as dev, this is by the way how you do it. You select the vertices first, then in the view tab, you go to edit, edit, weight, set vertex selection, as dev. Yes, thank you. And well, as you saw in the transfer view tab, something changed. Now, those vertices move, well, on a sphere. They move as if they were on a sphere.
This had me a little numb at the beginning because I tried researching more and more into it, but it, well, it really doesn't say all that much, not even in the LearnMD, not even on the LearnMD website. And I tried to see if anyone knows, but well, yeah, it's kind of unknown by some model modelers or even by some MDers. There are some MDers who just never touch PMX and use pre made models, but you're here to learn how to weight paint, so this is how you weight paint. Again, this was SDEF. It helps mostly with uh, knobby bones, for example, knees. Uh, and all the other bones that should move spherically or should deform spherically. Mostly, I would say apply it to, well, those parts of the mesh that should deform spherically. For example, the, this part right here and maybe this part. Sometimes it works like magic, but sometimes it just doesn't work all that well again make sure if you can test them both and we'll see how everything works like i said it works like magic sometimes but sometimes it just sucks on ice so with that being said hopefully you understood something i'm not i know i'm not very good ex at explaining i know i just go over the board sometimes but trust me those are well those are the main parts of weight painting i'm gonna re release another video in a week or so depends on how i edit them depends on how i make everything but make sure to also check the third part because you are going to you're going to get some life saving or time saving techniques trust me you just don't want to miss this one that's why I'm, I'm advertising it so much. So, again, check your bones, check your weight, check your, well, check everything because weight painting, it's, well, you sometimes see those models that deform bad and you just don't want to watch the animation anymore. So, yeah, good weight painting it equals a good model. Anyway, I was Albert from Unity Studios. Thanks for watching.